I'm Ron Pyle, and I'm the director of this year's classic player's production of Twelfth Night. It's a play about illusions. This play has a second title. It's called What You Will. Perhaps refers to just sort of an attitude of the play. Take what we're offering, accept it as you will. What country friend is this? I would say the main character in the play is Viola. This is Illyria lady. What should I do in Illyria? The play is her story. My brother. She is um, a wealthy young lady who is shipwrecked on the shores of Illyria. She was traveling with her brother. She thinks her brother has died. And I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as a boy to him. Viola decides to dress herself as a young man, and she takes on the name Cesario. She goes to the Duke and presents herself as a page, and he hires her into his household. Now, the Duke is trying to woo the Countess Olivia nearby with no success because she's in mourning, and she's sworn off all men. For seven years, she says she'll not see any men. The Duke decides to send his page, Cesario, who was really Viola, dressed as a young man, uh, to woo on his behalf. Then unfold the passion of my love to her. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. Viola, dressed as Cesario, goes to the Countess Olivia, tries to woo her on behalf of Orsino, the Duke. What ends up happening, though, Olivia falls in love with Cesario, not having any idea that it's a young lady dressed as a young man. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am a fool. What a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. We're all somewhat familiar with the story of um, the wealthy family who lives upstairs and the servants who have their own life going on downstairs. Well, in Olivia's household, the servants downstairs include Mariah, her lady-in-waiting, and uh, Olivia's uncle, Sir Toby Belch, who enjoys the company of Mariah. With drinking health to my niece, I'll drink to her as long as there is passage in my throat and drink in a lyric. And then Sir Toby's friend, Sir Andrew, who is actually there to woo Olivia, I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Oh, your niece will not be seen, and if she be, it's four to one she'll none of me. The Count Orsino here hard by woos her. She'll none of the count. But Sir Toby is taking his money all along throughout the story, trying to convince him that Olivia will hear his suit, will be open to his wooing, if he'll just give Sir Toby a little more money. Higher! Higher! Excellent! Malvolio is full of self-importance, proud and pious. He looks down on all the other household servants. And that sets Malvolio up for a joke, which uh, Mariah plays on him to sort of get back at him for his rudeness to the staff. He says he's going to tell on them for having too much fun. They hatch a plot which makes Malvolio believe that the Lady Olivia is actually in love with him. She's in love with him! My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now. Uh, he believes that, and that leads to a great deal of confusion and trouble for Malvolio, and a lot of fun for the rest of the household staff. Malvolio, I know my physical work on him. I shall plant you too. Let the fool make a third, wherein he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. <laughs> Observe him for the love of mockery. For I know that this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. <laughs> Close in the name of Justine. Now is the woodcock near the chin. The 
in the second half of the play, we see another big joke hatched by the staff, and this time Sir Toby Belch convinces Sir Andrew Egucheek that the young man Cesario, that's Viola dressed up as a man, is angry with him and wants to fight him. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, particularly you He your convinces boss, Viola of the same thing, that Sir been Andrew been wants to fight with her. Or strength, him. skill, and wrath can furnish man with all. And the two of them are then pushed together to have this duel that neither one of them really wants. Uh, in the process, there's a lot of fun and foolery as well. Another really important character in the play is Festy. Sorry, sir, that the fool should be as off with your master as with my mistress. He is identified as a clown or a jester. He belonged to the household of Olivia for many years. Festy reflects on what's going on in the lives of the other characters. There's expenses for thee. <laughs> Joe with his next commodity of hair, send me a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee I'm almost sick for one. He um, tends to be cynical, maybe a little melancholy. Uh, he sings uh, several songs in the play, and he comments on the foolishness of the behavior of the other characters, a focal point of normalcy for the play. Yes, We have so many productions going on here at uh, BJU that we can't all be on stage for rehearsals throughout the whole process. We rehearse most of the rehearsal period in the uh, Press Distance Learning Warehouse uh, over on the other side of campus. It's just a big open space that gives us a feeling for the size of the stage that we're going to be working on. There's no scenery. We have some props that we use to practice with. But um, in that phase of the rehearsal process, I'm really concerned with how those actors interact with one another and how to find the truth in the roles and uh, how to tell the story. And so for us, it doesn't really matter that we don't have the right scenery or props or, or makeup yet. We're still trying to discover the play and so we just operate in a general open space. 
until we have a chance to move over to Roadhaver Auditorium in the last two weeks of the rehearsal process. And uh, then we just have two weeks for all the technical things to come together. Others can be further draw thy sword! What? What? Nay, let me have an ounce or two of this Malatar's blood! Who told me on thy life I charge thee all? Madam. Will it be ever thus? Ungracious wretch fit for the mountain of the barbarous king of Madam Gabriel! There are many illusions in the play. For example, the main character, Viola, is dressed as a young man, and, and everyone mistakes her for a young man. And eventually she's mistaken for her brother, and he's mistaken for her. And all of these things are worked out in the final scene of the play in which people suddenly understand the truth. They see through all of the illusions and order is restored, and there's a wedding, and there's a song, and we go home feeling like things are right now in the country of Illyria.